first thing I'm going to do is mark out my missing teeth on this particular cast and I have my molars are missing on this side and my molars are missing up to and including the first premolar on that side. Now we indicated that we want to use the eye bar because it is the clasp of choice on an extension base removable partial denture. And so I would have a mesial rest, um, a distal guide plate, and I'm going to dip down, avoid the marginal gingiva by at least three millimeters and my guide plate will wrap around the portion of the tooth where it becomes a little bit smaller so that the combination of this minor connector and this guide plate are actually going to keep the tooth from moving to the lingual when this eye bar flexes into a .01 undercut. And the eye bar comes down, it avoids the marginal gingiva by a minimum of four millimeters its bottom edge is approximately six millimeters below the marginal gingiva. My major connector is going to end right here, so it's going to come down like this, slant a bit to the posterior, go down to the functional floor of the mouth, and this little area here has to be a minimum of five millimeters in width on our cast. Um, we have to have an indirect retainer on this Kennedy class one. Here's going to be our abutment teeth and we need two indirect retainers actually and I've decided to place those indirect retainers as a distal incisal angle rest on my canines. You can do an acid etch cingulum rest if you prefer. It has to be noted out on the paper and on the cast that that is in fact what you're doing. So this framework comes around like this and I'm going to plate the lingual of this first premolar. It would come up, go over the incisal edge, come down and plate. The reason we're plating the tooth is that we have from the marginal gingiva to the uh, bottom or functional floor of the mouth in the mouth, we on this cast, we only had about six millimeters of length in that area. Um, so we will do a lingual plate. So it'll come up, it goes from contact point to contact point, but does cover the cingulums of the teeth, never at the gingival margin. So this is our indirect retainer right here. On this other side, we're going to do an eye bar also. So we're going to have a direct or a, a rest here, and that rest will have a little bit of a sluice way in it. Same way over here, because this metal has to come up and over the cusp. So we're going to show a little sluice way. We're not bringing an arm through the front of that tooth or the buckle. Therefore, we do not need to have um, a sluice way coming forward. So we'll come around this tooth. It's going to come down, avoid the marginal gingiva by three or four millimeters. It's going to come back up and be a guide plate that encircles the tooth a little bit to its smaller size and therefore trapping the tooth from moving or to the lingual. I'm going to slant that major connector a little bit more to the distal and it'll come up here. And we need to show there's a little bit of a minor connector there. Dips down as I said before. Let's draw our acrylic resin. The acrylic resin will come back, totally cover the retromolar pad. It will come forward and come back up in this position right here. Um, I'm going to just show a little retromolar pad back there because we do have a rule. On the mandibular um, base attachment, it starts about two millimeters up from this base because we want it to be totally enclosed by the acrylic. So we start about two millimeters up from the bottom of this major connector. We come on back and the rule is that you come back two thirds of the distance to the beginning of retromolar pad. So we're going to come back to about here. Then it comes slightly over the crest of the ridge, not too far down because we want to butt some teeth sometimes up against the ridge here to get the angulation on the teeth correct. And this comes up 
to our guide plate that is coming down the side of the tooth right here. Inside of that, we're going to have, we create a tissue stop or processing stop as it's sometimes called and so these are metal parts with big holes in them to retain the acrylic resin and the same way here we have a nice large hole to retain the acrylic resin and this is our base attachment then. Our internal finish line, our finish lines here are not along this framework the finish lines are where the major connector joins the plastic. So here's where my plastic is coming, you know, right in through here, and it's joining my major connector right here. So it's on the major connector side, and it's indicated by dotted lines. There's no finish lines here. This acrylic resin, it's totally encompassing that metal framework back there. Now I can finish my eye bar because it is going to come back here it gets a little wider as it gets to the back and this little line would not have to be there but it's it's placed at that position so that when the framework is cast in metal it has a nice wide area for the gold to get through or to, for the metal to get through for casting purposes so this little line would not have to be there right there I'll try and draw it on the other side properly on the other side we're going to do the same thing this slants a little bit posteriorly our um, base comes down like this it's going to cover our retromolar pad it's going to come down to the depth of the vestibule and come back up here like this and our base attachment is incorporated into that it starts about two millimeters up above this pointed angle so that we can have a nice butt joint of our acrylic it comes back and I'm going to draw it a little differently than the other side because sometimes um, people will draw it like this and then they put the base the little processing stop off the back and this line comes up again just over the crest of the ridge and it joins our guide plate right here on this uh, facial portion and then inside there we're going to put some loops to hold some holes to put you know to hold our acrylic resin and like this so those are the kind of the two ways that you can draw uh, the processing stop uh, for one of these partial dentures where the acrylic joins the major connector it's right here where it joins the major connector it does not run down around this this plastic is going to totally encompass that area and I can finish off my eye bar by coming back and again it's going to come up here where this strut is it's a little wider here I've got it a little out of shape here it should be wider here gets smaller until it comes up usually when it comes out of this acrylic resin it might be about two millimeters in width two and a half millimeters then it comes up and uh, will skinny down to about two millimeters in this particular area the eye bar comes up and it engages the tooth at the 0.01 undercut then from the 0.01 undercut upward it goes to the survey line so that this eye bar is touching the tooth through an area it's almost like a little pod that touches the tooth uh, through an area of approximately two to three millimeters and it usually extends up to the survey line so if I had a tooth over here I drew the facial surface of my tooth and my O1 undercut is right here my O1 undercut is right there that eye bar will come up and let's say my survey line is right up here that would help if I had a pencil that survey line is right up here the eye bar actually touches the tooth at the 0.01 undercut and it comes up and at this point it will now not touch the tooth and it goes down like this so it is touching the tooth up to the survey line or a minimum of two millimeters 
of a pod up against that tooth. This is a side view of that eye bar. So it's touching the tooth through this area right through here. And then it can't go into an undercut for um, greater than 01. So at that point of 01 undercut, the laboratory has to block it out. That's our eye bar. This major connector is drawn at the functional floor of the mouth. So I'm going to put functional floor. Now one of the reasons we are using the um, ma uh, major connector of the lingual plate is that we really only had six millimeters. So in order to use a lingual bar if we wanted one, where we would have come down like this and come back up and that would have had to have been a minimum of five millimeters and we would have had to avoid the marginal gingiva by a minimum of three. Hence, that's where we get the eight. You have to avoid the marginal gingiva by three and your bar itself has to be five millimeters wide in order to use the lingual bar. Again, if we were using a lingual bar because we had eight millimeters, we would be coming across like this and back up and we wouldn't be plating those teeth. We would also plate these teeth if they're periodontally involved because if they were periodontally involved and we lost a tooth, we could cut a slit in this area right here, sort of a something like this, and we could put a false denture tooth in here and we could bring the acrylic through there and put it on the back of this plate and replace that tooth if it were lost. So any periodontally involved teeth, you want to plate them versus um, do uh, a lingual bar because you can't add to it very easily. I have drawn some additional designs that are possible for this, but again, if you can use the eye bar, that's the one that you want to use. Um, this particular design shows our eye bar on this side, which is what we've been doing. And actually, on those two teeth, that eye bar undercut is awfully close to the gingiva. And I might choose to cut a little prep of um, very slightly enhance that undercut there a little bit higher up on the tooth. So I might put that I would prep undercut. Okay? Now, um, on the other side, if I didn't have a 0.01 mid-facial undercut or if it was at the gingival margin, I might also look to see if I can do the reverse circlet clasp. The reverse circlet clasp has a mesial rest. Now, not necessarily an embrasure rest. That embrasure rest, this is my indirect retainer right here that I have placed. I could have placed it farther mesial on that tooth if I wanted to, but it'd be pretty ugly. Or I could have prepped an acid etch cingulum rest and just shown the, the mesial rest of that circlet clasp. But the reverse circlet clasp is a cast circumferential clasp that goes into a 0.01 distofacial undercut. Still is going to have a guide plate right through this area. and it can have either a lingual reciprocal arm or plating. We would put, I think, preferably the arm, and the arm would be placed at the survey line, and that survey line or that arm should be in the middle third of the tooth. So if your survey line is up in the incisal third, you should modify the tooth so that this can be placed no higher than the junction of the middle and occlusal third of the tooth. Just reinforcing the idea that we have to have two indirect retainers here. Whether we need that second one is debatable when it's right next to the reverse circlet um, clasp. This one would be acting as an indirect retainer. I'm not sure we gain a whole lot, but usually on a class one like to have um, two indirect retainers or one if it's not an indirect retainer it is possibly support for a long major connector depending on what teeth are missing. This particular design shows our two other clasping mechanisms that we can use. 
Again, I highly recommend the eye bar for an extension base. But if we had a 0.02 undercut, we could put the combination clasp assembly. The combination clasp assembly calls for the distal rest. It calls for a wrought wire into a 0.02 mesiofacial undercut right here. And it requires either an arm or plating, but either one of them has to be drawn at the survey line, and that has to be in the middle third. It can be in the upper part of the middle third, but it needs to be in the middle third, not up on the occlusal third. So this could be plating, which in which case we'd come across here and we wouldn't have dipped down. I dipped down uh, to make them more symmetrical because I was going to dip down over here. On this side, I'm showing the modified T-bar, which calls for an embrasure rest. When we're in this premolar area, we need an embrasure rest for the modified T-bar. That one dips down on the lingual and the combination of this guide plate, which is prepared to the where the tooth is just a little smaller, the combination of this minor connector coming up in this direction and this metal coming up in here to get into this, touch the tooth and prevent it from moving to the lingual when the modified T-bar goes into an undercut. The modified T-bar comes back and emerges from our base attachment. It comes forward horizontal to the ridge and this bottom section of our modified T-bar is also approximately six millimeters below the marginal gingiva. It crosses the marginal gingiva onto the tooth perpendicular uh, to this approach arm or parallel to the long axis and it comes up the middle of the tooth. It touches the tooth at the survey line or slightly above the survey line and only this little retentive portion goes down into the 0.01 undercut of the tooth. We prepare a guide plate approximately two millimeters in height from the marginal ridge downward two to three millimeters. And the guide plate touches the tooth a millimeter above that. So in most cases that guide plate would be contacting the tooth approximately two millimeters below the marginal ridge but it does have to touch the tooth at least in an area of one millimeter in height. So that's our guide plate position.